Hello, my name is Sherry Hartsfield, and I am a senior advocate with Disability Rights Texas. Today, we're going to discuss Medicaid waiver programs. A list of links referred to in this presentation can be found at www.drtx.org forward slash waivers. What are Medicaid waivers and how do they work? Waivers let states use Medicaid funds for long-term home and community-based services for people with disabilities or people with special health care needs in order to help them to continue to live in their community. Before the creation of waiver programs, people had to live in hospitals, nursing homes, or other institutions like state-supported living centers or residential treatment centers so that Medicaid would pay for long-term care services. What are Medicaid waivers and how do they work? They're named waivers because certain Medicaid requirements are waived, meaning they don't apply. For example, family income, all but one waiver are based on just the person's income alone. A person's income means any money that they personally have earned or are paid, not the whole family's income. Besides getting these additional services, people who receive waiver long-term services and supports also get access to full Medicaid healthcare benefits. This is a huge help for children and adults who have complicated medical needs and no other form of health insurance. We have seven Medicaid waivers in Texas. Each one has its own interest list. Consider adding your child or adult family member to all of the interest lists based on their identified diagnoses and current needs. You don't, want, you don't know what the future holds for your child or adult, so it's good to place them on as many interest lists as possible. The waivers are Home and Community-Based Services, or the HCS waiver, Community Living Assistance and Support Services, or the CLASS waiver, Deaf, Blind, and Multiple Disabilities, or DMB, DMD waiver, Medically Dependent Children's Program, or MDCP, Youth Empowerment Services, or the YES waiver, Texas Home Living, or the STAR Plus HCBS, which is Home and Community-Based Services waiver. All waivers are managed by Texas Health and Human Services Commission and the Department of State Health Services, or DISHES. Because of the number, people, number of people wanting these services, since it exceeds the number that can be served, most applicants will be put on an interest list until there is an opening. However, there are some options um, to access waivers in the community that do not require waiting list, uh, uh, waiting on the waiting list, excuse me. Um, such as money follows the person, limited nursing facility stay, which is for the MDCP waiver, or PASAR, which is for HCS, or crisis diversion, which is also for HCS. Some common services that are uh, available in all of the Medicaid waiver programs are minor home modifications, nursing, private duty nursing, skilled nursing, occupational, physical, and speech therapies, prescriptions, respite care, day hab or day activity services, employment, audiology, dental, financial management services, which are unique, unique to people doing consumer directed services or behavioral supports. What is HCS? The HCS program provides services and supports to people with an intellectual disability or a related condition who live with their families, in their own homes, or in small group homes with no more than four beds. A related condition is a disability other than an intellectual disability or a mental illness that begins before the age of 22 and will not likely end. This condition must also cause major functional limitations, similar to an individual with an intellectual disability. Some related conditions are autism and other developmental disabilities, such as cerebral palsy, seizure disorders, and maybe spina bifida. 
Um, this waiver is an alternative to receiving services in an ICF IDD facility. Some of the things that are included in the HCS program are residential support services, adaptive aids, day habilitation, minor home modifications, nursing, respite, professional therapies such as the OT, PT, and speech, supported employment, and other services. HCS also offers people the choice to self-direct some of their services. Um, this would help a person to um, have some control over how their some of their services are delivered and managed. The requirements to receive HCS are that there are no age limit to receive services. You must be able to get Medicaid services before enrolling into the program, must have an, a, an intellectual disability under the state law or a diagnosis of a related condition with an IQ of 75 or below. The income and assets may not be more than the specified limits. So it's 300% of the max of what SSI is. And then a person cannot have more than $2,000 in resources. Again, this refers to the person's income only, not the family as a whole. Um, and you cannot be enrolled in another waiver and receive this waiver. You can be on the interest list for other waivers, but you can only receive one waiver at a time. PASAR, or pre-admission screening and resident review. Earlier, we mentioned that there were three ways that a person could access um, a potential waiver earlier than your name coming up on, on the interest list. One of those ways is through PASAR. PASAR is a federally mandated program that requires all states to pre-screen individuals seeking admission into a certified Medicaid certified nursing home. PASAR must be administered to identify individuals with intellectual disabilities and developmental disabilities. A person must be um, have eligibility or medical necessity in a nursing facility. PASAR can be used for people who are already in a nursing facility and wanting to get out, or if a person is at imminent risk of a nursing facility placement, they can be diverted and have the ability to access HCS. This is called a PASAR diversion request. It can also be called a nursing facility diversion request. The second way that a person could potentially access um, the HCS waiver without your name coming up on the interest list would be if a person was in, was in crisis. Um, the eligibility criteria for um, crisis diversion would be that a person is truly in crisis and or at imminent risk of institutionalization. Um, there doesn't have to be any nursing needs um, with regards to crisis diversion. It's just that the person needs to be in crisis and at imminent risk of um, SLC um, placement. It does require a lot of documentation and, and, and data and attempts for alternative community supports. Um, some LIDAs will attempt to explore those alternative community supports. So um, we have to stress the imminent risk or crisis, um, the need for crisis services in order to get them to push forward with um, requesting the crisis diversion. And this may be a better option than the YES waiver for kiddos as it offers long-term services and supports. How is PASAR diversion and crisis diversion initiated? Both are initiated through the local authority um, and the child's county. The local authority um, would be whatever county you're residing in and then whoever that, that local intellectual and developmental disability authority is in that area. Um, below is a um, LIDA directory um, that you can get to to find out more information on possibly who your LIDA is. 
Um, they have, the LIDAs have um, PASAR coordinators and crisis diversion coordinators, which are separate. And so despite the separation in coordinators and the fact that they do not often communicate, each facilitator is typically good about making recommendations on what may work best depending on the situation. Um, a family can be a referring entity to a person that may be seeking um, PASAR diversion, and you would provide an overview of the client, their needs, and the situation to help expedite that process. So when trying to figure out whether it's PASAR or crisis diversion, both of these can be viable options for people who are either at imminent risk of a nursing facility placement or at imminent risk of a, of a state supported living center placement. PASAR would divert a person from a nursing facility to access the HCS waiver, but you must meet criteria for nursing facility placement, which means medical necessity. And for crisis diversion, this will divert a person who is at risk of an SSLC placement to access the HCS waiver. You must meet criteria for state supported living center placement, meaning an intellectual, uh, an intellectual disability with an IQ of 69 or below or have a related condition with an IQ of 75 or below. Both options will require the enrollment process to be completed by the LIDA. This can potentially be a timely process and could take up to three to five months, but it certainly beats waiting 15 years, um, which is what many people are waiting on the interest lists. Next, community living assistance and support services or the class waiver. The class waiver provides home and community-based supports to people with related conditions. Again, a related condition is a disability other than an intellectual disability or a mental illness, which begins before the age of 22 and is not likely to end. And it um, is a condition that, that must also cause major functional limitations, similar, to, again, to a person with an intellectual disability. And some of those examples of related conditions are are autism, cerebral palsy, seizure disorders, and spina bifida. This waiver is an alternative to receiving services in an ICF IDD facility. What is included in the class waiver program? Behavioral supports, adaptive aids, medical supplies, respite care, occupational, physical, and speech therapies, minor home modifications, nursing, specialized therapies, and some of those specialized therapies can be aquatic therapy, equestrian therapy, massage therapy, those are a few. Um, it also uh, has pre-vocational training, supported employment, transition assistance, and others. Class also offers the choice to self-direct some of those services. And that means that anyone enrolled in the program can have control over how some of their services are delivered and managed. The requirements for the class waiver are that there are no age limit to receive services. You must have a diagnosis of a related condition under federal and state law. You must be eligible for Medicaid in the community. You must live in your own home or your family's home. The income and assets may not be more um, than, than these limits, which is 300% of the maximum of SSI. And a person cannot have more than $2,000 in resources. Again, this refers to the individual, not a family. Um, you cannot be enrolled in another wa waiver program if you are enrolled in class. And then you can remain on other interest lists while you're on the class waiver. Um, you just cannot receive more than one waiver at a time. The next waiver is the Deaf, Blind, and Multiple Disabilities Waiver, or the D DBMD. The DBMD program provides services for people who are deaf, blind, or have a condition that leads to deaf blindness, plus an additional disability. This waiver is an alternative to receiving services in an ICF IID facility. 
what's included in the deaf blind multiple disabilities waiver, adaptive aids, medical supplies, audiology, behavioral supports, assisted living, respite care, dietary services, occupational, physical, and speech therapies, minor home modifications, nursing, prescription drugs, and others. DMB, DBMD also offers people the choice to self-direct some services. So this is um, an option for people so that they can feel as though they have some control over how some of their services are delivered and managed. The requirements to receive DBMD, there's no age limit to receive the services. You must have a diagnosis of deaf blindness or a condition that will cause deaf blindness, plus at least one other disability that impairs independent functioning. Again, the income and assets may not be more than the specified limit, which is 300% of the max of SSI. There cannot be more than $2,000 in resources, and you cannot be enrolled in another wa waiver program if you are receiving DBMD. The Medically Dependent Children's Program, or MDCP. MDCP provides services to families caring for children and young adults as an, al as an alternative to receiving services in nursing facilities. What's included in the MDCP waiver? respite services, adaptive aids, employment assistance, flexible family supports, which are services that support a person's basic daily activities like bathing, dressing, and preparing meals, minor home modifications, and others. MDCP also offers people the choice to self-direct some of their services. The requirements to receive MDCP a child must be younger than the age of 21. If they're younger than the age of 18, the child must be living with an adult family member, such as a parent, guardian, or sibling, or with a legally recognized foster family that includes no more than four children unrelated to your child. You must meet medical necessity and level of care requirements for nursing home admission. You must be eligible for Medicaid in the community including able to receive SSI or able to receive medical assistance only or MAO protected status or meet the income and resource requirements for Medicaid benefits in a nursing home. MAO, MAO refers to someone who is able to get Medicaid but does not receive SSI payments. The income and assets may not be um, more than the specified limit, which again is 300% of the max of SSI with no more than $2,000 in resources. Again, this refers to the child, not the entire family. And a child cannot be enrolled in another program while receiving the MDCP waiver. Now, the third way that we talked about um, to access a waiver quicker, and in this instance, it is the MDCP waiver, is through a limited nursing facility stay. And this is an option for medically fragile children to bypass the MDCP wait list. It requires a signed form 2406, which is an H a Health and Human Services Commission form, and medical records by a physician to establish medical fragility. MCOs, hospital social workers, et cetera, can assist parents with this process. HHSC determines the eligibility based on a finding of medical fragility. After eligibility is determined, the MCO finds a nursing facility that can take the child, sets up the stay and establishes Medicaid and MDCP services. Some of the common issues that we see with um, limited nursing facility stays are in fact proving medical fragility. There is no appeal. So if you get denied, you'll just have to wait and reapply again. The location of an accepting facility, finding a facility that will accept your child and of course, cost and transportation.
There is an aging out process with the MDCP waiver. Um, and many of the M MCOs discuss the aging out process beginning at the age of 15, although transition occurs a few months prior to the 21st birthday. There's discussion on guardianships and then transition from children's Medicaid to adult Medicaid. Most often a transition from MDCP will go to the STAR plus HCBS waiver. The biggest issues that we are seeing through the aging out process when a child is transitioning from MDCP to the STAR plus HCBS waiver is high nursing needs, cost caps, and general revenue. Next waiver is the Texas Home Living Waiver. This waiver pro pro program provides services to people with an intellectual disability or a related condition who live in their own home or in their family's home. Again, a related condition is a disability that, are, that occurred before the age of 22 that will not likely end and will affect three of the major life areas. Um, and some examples of those related conditions, again, are autism, cerebral palsy, seizure disorders, spina bifida. Those are a few examples of related conditions. What are included in the Texas Home Living Waiver? Adaptive aids, behavioral support, community support, day habilitation, employment assistance, minor home modifications, nursing, respite, professional therapy such as OT, PT, and speech, supported employment, and others. Texas Home Living also offers the choice to self-direct their services. The requirements to receive Texas Home Living waiver, there is no age limit to receive these services. You must be able to get Medicaid services before enrolling in the program. You must have an intellectual disability under state law or a diagnosis of a related condition with an IQ of 75 or below. The income and assets may not be more than the specified limits, um, which is 300% of the max of SSI, and you can't have more than $2,000 in resources. Texas Home Living Waiver is the only waiver program that considers parental income and in determining a child's eligibility. You cannot be enrolled in another waiver program and be in the Texas Home Living wa Waiver and you can remain on the other interest lists while you are enrolled in this waiver. The STAR Plus HCBS or Home and Community Based Services waiver. Before um, STAR Plus waiver was called STAR Plus waiver, it was called the Community Based Alternatives waiver and it ended September 1st, 2014. It has been replaced by the STAR Plus Home and Community Based Services waiver, which is managed by Texas Health and Human Services Commission. This waiver is also known as the HCBS STAR Plus waiver or SPW. It is a managed care model so that individuals who qualify for nursing facility care can get acute care and long-term services and supports in order to live in their communities rather than in a nursing home. What's included in the STAR Plus waiver? Personal assistance services, in-home or out-of-home respite care, home nursing services, emergency response services, home delivered meals, minor home modifications, adaptive aid, medical equipment and supplies, adult foster care, assisted living, cognitive rehabilitation, dental services, financial management services, occupational, physical, and speech therapies, and transition assistance services. The requirements to receive the STAR Plus HCBS waiver is that you must be 21 years or older, you must meet medical necessity criteria for a nursing home care, and be at risk of being placed in a nursing home. You must be eligible for Medicaid in the community, including able to receive SSI and able to receive um, MAO or medical assistance only protected status or meet the income and resource requirements 
for Medicaid benefits in a nursing home. Again, the MAO refers to someone who is able to access Medicaid, but not able to access supplemental security income payments. Uh, the income and assets is the same as in the other waivers, 300% of the max of SSI and no more than $2,000 in resources. This again refers to the person's income, not the family income. And you cannot be enrolled in another waiver program while receiving Star Plus HCBS waiver. The Youth Empowerment Services or the YES waiver. The Youth Empowerment Services waiver is a statewide 1915C Medicaid waiver program that helps children and youth with serious mental, emotional, and behavioral difficulties. The YES waiver provides intensive services delivered within a strengths-based team planning process called Wraparound. Wraparound builds on family and community support and utilizes YES services to help build the family's natural support network and connection with their community. YES services are family-centered, they're coordinated and effective at preventing out-of-home placement and promoting lifelong independence and self-defined success. The program aims to reduce the amount of time that the child is out of their home and out of their community because of a mental health need. Um, they aim to expand available mental health services and supports, and they aim to improve the lives of children and, and youth. A wraparound facilitator will meet with you weekly to work on creating a plan specifically for your child. The wraparound plan is also made with the help from your child and family team, which meets once a, meet, once a month. The team includes you, your child, people who are important in your child's life. This may be professionals. It could be family, friends, coaches, teachers, anyone that you want to help your child meet their goals. Together, the team develops a plan of care to meet the specific needs and goals of your child and the family using YES services, community resources, and family strengths. What are some of the benefits of the YES waiver? The YES waiver is designed to improve the lives of children, youth, and families served. You and your child are supported by a team. Services and supports target your child and family's needs. You and your child can access services that are only available through the S waiver. Supports help your child stay in your home and in their community. Who is eligible for the S yes waiver? In order to be eligible for the S yes waiver, a child must be between the ages of three and 18 years. They must have a serious mental, emotional, and behavioral difficulties. They must have a qualifying mental health diagnosis. They must be at risk of being placed outside of their home due to their mental health needs. They must meet the criteria to be in a psychiatric hospital. They may be eligible for Medicaid. The parent's income does not apply. And they must currently live in a home setting with a legal guardian or on their own. The program, the average length of the YES waiver program is eight to 16 months. Your child's needs will determine the program duration. How do you access the YES waiver? If you are a parent or a guardian, please contact your local mental health authority and ask for your child to be added to the YES, yes waiver inquiry list. Below are some helpful links to, from handbooks of HHSC to uh, waiver comparison sheets to income and asset limits, um, uh, the HCS handbook and the Texas Administrative Code. Um, there's um, handbooks and links on every one of the seven waivers. And including the, the limited nursing facility stay. This concludes the presentation on Medicaid waivers. Please be sure to get on all interest lists that you or your family member could potentially be eligible for. 
Remember to follow up with the entity that runs each interest list regularly and find out where you are on that list. If you should move or get a new mailing address, be sure to change that with each entity as well. This work is supported by the Texas Council for Developmental Disabilities, Imagine Art, and Disability Rights Texas. Thank you. A list of links referred to in this presentation can be found at www.drtx.org forward slash waivers.